Hello, welcome to this fine episode of State of Society, hashtag my story. My good name as always is Mike G and welcome to 2017. This is our first episode this year and we are on matters of peace and development. I have a gentleman called Joe Karanja, he's a lawyer and he's Kenyan. I have known him for I think 10 years plus now, a few months and he's been so much involved in the work of trying to bring peace between our conflicting communities in different parts of Kenya and many different parts of this planet. Boss. Good to see you, Mike. Welcome to my show. Yeah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you so much. And thank you very much because you're my first guest in 2017. And tell us about yourself. Thank you so much, Mike. I feel privileged to be on your show. Thank you. Yes, as you have heard, my name is Joe Karanja. Yeah. Uh, I was born in Eldoret, mm -hmm. in Wasingisho County. That's Rift Valley. That's uh, former Rift Valley. Oh, okay. And uh, I grew up there. Mm -hmm. I school there, Central Primary School, mm -hmm. late Wasingisho High School. And uh, later on, I proceeded to my university in India, mm -hmm. where I graduated in economics. Okay. And then I did law. So you did economics and you did law? Yes, I was there for six years. But you did law in India or here? In India. Okay. Yes. And then later on came here. Okay. Joined the Kenya School of Law mm -hmm. before being admitted as an advocate of the High Court. Okay. Yes. So your Indian degree is legitimate? Oh yes, very, very, <laughs> very. All right, all yes. right. So I've known you for many years and I think I first met you in 2006, around April there. There about, yes. With uh, Initiatives of Change International. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us your involvement with this organization, MRA? Yeah, MRA in full means Moral Rearmament. Yeah. That's the name of the organization. And uh, it's uh, an international network of people. Yeah. It was actually uh, started by a man called Frank Bookman. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank Bookman is an American, he was a church minister mm -hmm. uh, who had a deep experience in his own life yeah. and came to realization that you cannot change things mm -hmm. without starting with yourself. Yeah. With yourself. And uh, it's actually the press that gave this initiative moral rearmament mm -hmm. because in those years, just before the Second World War, mm -hmm. many of these uh, European powers were rearming yeah. for war. So, and at that time, uh, Frank Bookman gave a, mm -hmm. a broadcast and said that what the world needed was not arming yeah. militarily, but rather mm -hmm. arming morally. Morally, yeah. So Safe, it, yeah. Yes, so it became moral rearmament. Mm -hmm. Uh, but later on, the name was changed to Initiatives of Change. Mm -hmm. And uh, Initiatives of Change is operating in over 120 countries in the world. Right now? Yeah, right now. How did you come across Initiatives of Change? For me, I came across it when I was uh, still in primary school. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, my parents were very much involved in it. Must be very many years ago. Yes, actually, I was in, back in 1982. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was in my last year of primary school, yeah. and um, at that time, I was I was wondering because I saw my parents mm -hmm. uh, with a group of other people, very diverse group, yeah. and I could see them posing at some point and writing down some thoughts. Mm -hmm. So later on, I asked my father what it was all about, mm -hmm. and he told me that. Uh, Moral rearmament is driven by this idea that God speaks to individuals mm -hmm. and that if we let God guide our lives, yeah. then uh, we'll be a better place to tackle daily challenges. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that really inspired me that God can actually talk to yeah, people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So putting God central in your own life, mm -hmm. actually that's the core message of moral rearmament. And the initiatives of change. Is, is, the initiatives is of change. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it doesn't take you out of your faith, yeah. religious uh, beliefs. Uh, but from my own experience, it actually enhances that. Mm -hmm. It builds that faith. Because initiatives of change 
brings people of all backgrounds, yeah. different faiths and so on. So you're saying there is a common thing in the initiatives of change ideology that makes all these people who are from different faiths yes. feel connected? Yes. Yeah. In fact, there are four tenets. There are four standards. Mm -hmm. Absolute honesty, absolute unselfishness, mm -hmm. absolute love and uh, absolute purity. Yeah. And uh, when you look at all religions, they have these beliefs yeah. also, the four tenets. Yeah. So they are acceptable by all religions, and that's why it's naturally you'll find every religion in, in the initiative. So it's not a cult? It's not a cult, okay. yes. And furthermore, the initiatives of challenge challenges people. It's not just being good that yeah. you end there. You have to move a step forward and do something. You have to have an impact yeah. to your the surrounding the people so interact with. So the initiatives of change idea influenced your growth after primary school and what you became after that. Yes. Up to, you know, high school education and university education. Yes. You still believed in these ideas. Yes, absolutely. And actually when I went to India for my university, mm -hmm. in India they have a big center yeah. for initiatives of change at a place called Panchgani, the state of Maharashtra. So during vacations, mm -hmm. instead of coming back home for holidays, I yeah. always went there. Mm -hmm. And I was able to interact with many people, industrialists, yeah. farmers, and people, people of all walks of life. But what exactly did you do there? Did you have a role every time you worked there? Uh, at that time I was still a student. Mm -hmm. um, and when I went there, I went as a participant. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on, in the following years, I went there to support. Yeah organizing conferences, mm -hmm. how, you know, to facilitate and things like that. Yeah. Um, and later on I was even invited as a speaker mm -hmm. to so many of these conferences. Happening in the same, same center? Yes, same okay. center. And at times uh, in different parts of India, mm -hmm. they had these uh, programs going on, yeah. like industrial conferences, mm -hmm. where I was very much privileged to interact with various captains mm -hmm. of industry in India. Yeah. I am aware that there is a program on solar lights in Baringo County and uh, the, the South Rift. Yeah, in Wasingisho. It's actually, it actually started in Eldoret, okay. in my hometown. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually it was sort of accidental. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can remember way back in 2007 when we had the post-election violence, yeah. Eldoret was the epicenter. Mm -hmm. Uh, of the violence, the communities were very much divided, mm. and you know, as a Kenyan, it has taken so long yeah. for actual healing to take place. It's a process. It's a process, it's a process, and, process that's, yeah. and that's going on. Mm. And I remember way back now in 2012. Uh, actually, it was on I think first or second of mm -hmm. January 2012. Mm. Uh, my mother, were, my mother and I were discussing about. Uh, how we can help communities yeah. reconcile. Mm -hmm. And she had in mind about a dozen women mm -hmm. who are not seeing eye to eye with each other. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to do something mm -hmm. uh, to make a living. Mm -hmm. And one thing she offered was to give them space yeah. just adjacent to a home in Eldoret mm -hmm. uh, where they could do small businesses selling fruits and vegetables and so on. Yeah. But the challenge at that time was, yes, you give the, you've given them the space. What about in the evenings? Mm -hmm. And that's the it's time when the business yeah. is, yeah. you know, that's actually the time when the business speaks. Mm -hmm. So at that time we were trying to wonder, what about these solar lights? Mm -hmm. If we got a few and, and uh, give to these ladies. And as we were discussing this, a friend of mine called me from England. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that time, he had come across an organization called Solar Aid in UK. Yeah. And this good friend of mine, whom I had known for many years, is called Keith Neal. Yeah. He asked me if I heard about uh, Solar Aid yeah. and their shop here in Nairobi, mm. the Sunny Money Shop, which sells these solar lights at uh, discounted prices. Mm. So I told him I had not heard about them. And I told them, actually, this is the thing that we are discussing right now with my mom. Mm -hmm. 
So at that time, he gave me the address. So I went to look for these people who are selling the solar. In Nairobi? In Nairobi. Okay. And then uh, I was able to source, uh, you know, a few dozens of these lights. Yeah. And the first lot we gave to these ladies, mm -hmm. the ladies my mother was trying to help yeah. reconcile. Mm -hmm. And the most interesting thing is that when they saw these lights, they were so happy. Yeah. In that some of these lights, they could use them not only for lighting, mm -hmm. but also for charging their mobile phones. I, I imagine that <clears throat> all these initiatives and your own flow of thought and how you can yes. impact communities have yeah. been influenced by the initiatives of change and yeah. ideas. Mm. So I want us to have a look at a small clip of what is the initiatives of change and when we come back you will tell us about the effect on human relationships in this one. In the 1930s, moral rearmament became a popular ideology in the world through Frank Bookman an American Lutheran priest who dedicated his life to remaking the world. He saw the World War coming. There were conflicts of global proportions. Germans and French couldn't face each other. The world was facing an unprecedented crisis. His experience was profound. His admission to his past wrongs, his apology, his restitution was the magic. He wrote six letters of apology to the men against whom he felt so angry. I like to call his I too was wrong moment. And he found the answer to bitterness. He was fearless. He was bold. He created a revolutionary path that is now the initiatives of change. An idea to build a new world through new people. It's been addressing global needs through personal change. Hundreds and thousands of people across the world have come across this ideology through people, conferences and through programs run by the initiatives of change all over the world. And the message has been the same. Change starts with the self. Engage others, create answers, give hope to humanity. Today the world is in a crisis. From a cotton farmer in Nagpur, India, to a police officer in Nairobi, Kenya, a crisis of the human spirit is everywhere. They are searching for healing, for justice, for peace, at a skill never before witnessed. Nations are in war and debt, communities are in anguish and families are breaking. All these problems are caused by human relationships. The Initiatives of Change has inspired millions of people in the world. At least for today, that I will stick to my decisions. Means in practice. Live together as different cultures. Is to find joy in serving people. To the place I come from. To be a change maker. To create answers. Through doing small things. This has been possible through listening, introspecting and through taking action. An action that responds to the needs of the world. All right, it's quite interesting how you know an organization can influence people or ideologies can influence people to you know start seeing themselves in a different way and start seeing other people in a different way and feel really literally inspired and moved to make a difference in other people's lives at expectations of no payment or no expectations of any rewards. And this is exactly what Joe Karanja and many other people in this organization are doing. And we go back to now the effect on human relationships through this program. Can you say that there is a change in the way people relate these communities after your initiative and how the people you have engaged? Is, is there anything tangible that you can say that you have seen? Yes, yes very tremendous achievements. Uh, now, apart from the communities working together yeah. in search of peace and building bridges, that they have been able to support each other yeah. economically and make ends meet. Uh, right now, as we are talking, we are close to 1,000 families who are involved in this program of all communities. Uh, we have so many young people now who are doing something. Yeah. 
uh, I know of a friend of mine who came and saw what was happening and was very much impressed, uh, a businessman here in Nairobi who, is, uh, who has a tannery in Nairobi. He actually identified young people from this group uh, who are interested in leather, yeah. leather industry. Yeah. And he actually advanced them uh, about 10,000 US dollars wow. given directly so that they could source the raw materials mm. from farmers mm. and then they can sell to the tannery. Mm. So about 40 of them are in business yeah. up to now. They source from farmers and sell to, mm. to this tannery in Nairobi. Mm. So that's one front. Yeah. And uh, so the others, the women also are doing the small businesses, mm -hmm. do you know. Some are selling vegetables, some are hawking <coughs> things. And, uh, and some of them are actually selling the solar lights themselves. Oh, to Oh, yes, to other communities. They are selling each other. They are selling even to other people <coughs> who are outside this group. So this means that relationships are becoming stronger. They are becoming because very they stronger. They get to interact. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, last year, 2016, mm -hmm. in the week of November, starting 13th of, uh, 13th of uh, November, mm -hmm. going for about two weeks, yeah. it was a big time for the whole group in Eldred, mm -hmm. and we had guests from neighboring counties, mm -hmm. just to see what are the things that we've been able to do and achieve. And some of the things that I witnessed was that um, some of these members in the community who had some disputes yeah. with others uh, and already they had found reconciliation. Mm. Some had already filed some courts, uh, some cases in courts, mm. especially in Nairobi, <coughs> and uh, they decided to withdraw those, those matters. Okay. Against so, each other? Yes. Wow. So my time at that time was to help them also mm. to withdraw those okay. matters because okay. all of them actually had actually been yeah. Sold mm -hmm. amicably without going to. I have a question. Court. These are different communities you are working with, yes. and you are dealing with conflicts of national proportions. Yes. This community does not get along with this community. Yes. How do you manage to go as a person who does not come from that community and still be able to bring them together? For me, actually, I come here just to facilitate, mm -hmm. but the actual work is done by, by these communities. Mm -hmm. And the thing I've discovered is that when they talk of their own stories, yeah. they share their own stories of forgiveness mm -hmm. and how they have found peace through forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So these stories are the ones that influence other people. Mm -hmm. And not only that, many people are seeing that there is gain mm -hmm. in having peace. Yeah. You know, they're able to do businesses, mm -hmm. their daily activities, economic Absolutely. activities, Absolutely. Yeah. you know. And now they don't have to lament and say, no, there is no employment mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that are attracting many people to come and be part of this thing. Because an ordinary Kenyan is a peace loving person. Yeah. Peace loving. Very many people want to have oh, peace. Oh, yes, like yes, yes. Sometimes they are. And I think mm -hmm. the people who are killing the dreams of our children are the yeah. politicians. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say so. But these are the people who are killing the sorry, dreams. It's true of of our young people and our children. Mm. But an ordinary Kenyan is out for peace. Mm. They want to do their businesses, they want to raise their families mm. and so on. And uh, also to give these communities yeah. a wider view of our country mm. so that when it comes to Form 1 selection and a child from this community yeah. has to go to another school in another community, mm. They have to go, you know, they have to be proud that they are going to visit another yeah, yeah. part of the country. Another county. Yes. Far from home. Far Perhaps. from home. Yeah. That's the thing that we all long for. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to build those bridges that every now and then the politicians yeah. are, mm -hmm. are destroying. Have you been involved with any programs that Initiatives of Change Kenya itself uh, carries out in, in context of peace and other matters outside, outside peace? As I can tell you, uh, Mike, is that um, when I came back from India, yeah. that is way back in 1993, there were very few young people mm -hmm. within initiatives of change. Yeah, in, in Kenya. In Kenya, yes. Yeah. So the work was not moving as fast as mm -hmm. one would have uh, liked. Yeah. So one of the first things I did was to 
mobilize young people. I went to universities, uh, both here. And out of that, you are able to get a very, very good team of young people. And these young people, they say, we have to take this idea even to neighboring countries. Absolutely. And I know many of them went to Uganda and mm -hmm. went to, to, to Tanzania mm -hmm. and started looking for young students mm -hmm. uh, who had some potential of leadership. Mm -hmm. And we had a very big conference here in Nairobi mm -hmm. at uh, Amani Conference Center, way really? back in 2005. Yeah. So, and this conference was actually organized by these young people. Wow. They raised all the funds, mm -hmm. they got their counterparts from Uganda, yeah. they got their counterparts from Tanzania. And all the logistics and plans. All the logistics, yeah. it was paid by these mm -hmm. young Kenyans. Wow. They ferried about 50 from Uganda and 50 mm -hmm. from Tanzania. Yeah. And we are about 150. Maybe you can mention for some, one week. some few names you may remember. Oh, yes, yeah. some of the people we have, people you had people like uh, Cape Town Batty, my friend, yeah. uh, Cape Town Batty. Mm -hmm. These are the people I met in those days. Mm -hmm. We have people like uh, 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 Dorothy Nditi, who is the yeah. deputy governor of Embo County. Embo County. Oh, wow. yeah. We have uh, Dan Kidega. Mm -hmm. Dan Kidega is from Uganda, mm -hmm. he's now the Speaker of the East African Parliament. Wow. Uh, and many others. Uh, the list is actually endless. Yeah. You have people like uh, Dan Okello, mm -hmm. who was in the judiciary. Was the chief so of staff these young people, uh, I imagine they may not be very young right now. Yes. But there is something that they brought into minds of many young people. Even yes. Through yes. the initiatives of change, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, tell us about the Clean Elections campaign because. I understand it's a program that has been very active every year when yes. Kenya is approaching general elections and your involvement in that one. Yes, that one was actually, when I came back in 1993, mm -hmm. I straight away joined the UNHCR, United Nations High Commission for Refugees. Okay. I was an intern there mm -hmm. uh, and it was part of the program, Kenya School of Law Programs. Yeah. So I did my internship with the UN. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I joined uh, from end of 93. And 1994, I was still there yeah. in the UNHCR. And uh, in April, that's when the genocide erupted in Rwanda. In Rwanda. And that is in 94. Yeah. So when it came, so as my part uh, of my daily duties at the UNHCR, mm -hmm. would go and meet some of these refugees. They had come in their thousands mm -hmm. in Kenya. And some of them were still kept at the airport, at the periphery of the Jomo Kenyatta airport. Yeah. So I went round and talked to many of them. And as I talked to these refugees, I realized that what had happened in Rwanda could happen anywhere, yeah. including this country. Mm -hmm. And it was at that time when I shared with my friends and I said, can we do something mm -hmm. to stop that kind of genocide yeah. taking place yeah. in, in Kenya? <clears throat> That was which year? No? That was in, now it's 1994, that's 1994. when I had this thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it took a long time to start laying down the, uh, the, the, the plan of yeah, how to, yeah, to yeah. carry it out. Mm -hmm. And then um, one thing that came to my mind was that probably we need to focus all our energies on mm -hmm. elections. Yeah. And the reason why I chose on elections was 1992, while I was still in India, yeah. again we had some violence around the 92 elections in Kenya still. In Kenya yeah. still. Yeah. And I thought, mm. why do we have problems around the elections? So I thought, mm. let's focus on elections and let's use that opportunity to challenge every Kenyan mm. that this is the time now to mm. clean up the mess in this country, yeah. beat corruption, mm. beat violence, you know. So we set up a clean elections campaign mm. way back in 1995. So the first current elections campaign was... In yes, targeting the 1997 <coughs> elections. Okay, okay. So, but the whole thing was actually in October 1995. Okay. So we brought uh, about a dozen people. We brought uh, different backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. We had students, university students. From around the Yes, country. we had businessmen. Mm. Uh, we had uh, different races. Yeah. We had our Zungus, we had, uh, you know, all Kenyans. Yeah. yeah. And we had a weekend in Bogoma. Mm -hmm. That's where we went for a weekend, for a retreat. Yeah. Just to be sure that mm -hmm. this is what the Almighty God was calling so you, us you to do. you plan something and you ultimately 
current out? Yes, I carried it and out. Was out. it successful? It was very successful. Yeah. What I actually did was, uh, mm. when I started it, people said, no, you have to stick with it and mm. see that mm. it goes up to, up to the end. I'm saying like, initiatives of changes coming up with many programs through what people are inspired yes. to live. Yeah. And there's a life that they yeah. want to see. Yeah. And there's societies and communities they want to see change. Yeah? Yes. How does this make you feel when you see a change in society through you? Uh, let me say it's I know, not. I know, I know, you're not supposed to feel like a saint. <laughs> yeah. But um, mm. you, because you literally you are inspiring lives and you're making people start to look at life in a different way. Yes. Because when you move someone from a point of you know, retrogression and yeah. hate and strife yeah. to a, a place where a person can start reflecting and feeling like they can make a difference in the society. Yeah. There's something that you feel inside. And what was that? Because it's what we, 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 we want the viewer to That's take a, home. It gives me a lot of satisfaction. Yeah. You know, very, very happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I go around, you know, in this country and abroad and I see some of the people I've worked with and see now the other initiatives that, mm. that they are uh, they are doing, yeah. I feel so happy. But one thing I always tell the Almighty God is to help me mm. identify the real people, mm. the good people. And uh, so far so good, I've come across so many people, we share things and we say, can we work together? Mm. And definitely I tell you, yeah. it happens. And because of this, you find there has been a lot of invitations that mm -hmm. have come from across the world. And I also got the opportunity to serve in the International Board of Initiatives of Change yeah. for close to five years. And I was able to... I wanted our viewer to see the video on the solar lights in Baringo, okay. because it's, I think, one of the major things that you have done of yes. and going to meet a very troubled Yes. part of the country. So we have a look at this video which was made in 2015, December. actually standing in the heart of the Pokot country. Uh, this is what we call East Pokot and it's in uh, Baringo County. One of the counties that uh, is infested with uh, cattle rustling. And uh, the Pokot community, many people perceive them to be, to be the aggressors. And therefore their relationships with other communities, that is the Tugen and the Ilchamos has not been very smooth. So they have been clashing from time to time. And uh, some time ago, one of my friends here, a respected Pokot elder, invited me to come and bring the solar lights, uh, knowing what we have been doing in Eldoret, solar for peace, whereby warring communities have been, you know, buying for each other the solar light so that they can present to the people they perceive as their enemies. And I was very much fascinated by, by that thing. And immediately I told him about it, he, he bought some of those uh, solar lights and uh, he presented to some of his people. <laughs> community has reached a stage whereby they feel now instead of being perceived as the aggressors they want to go out and make peace and preach peace with their communities 
and that's why I came to meet the community in his village. Uh, the Morans, who are normally the youth, the energetic youth who are normally used to fight, and uh, the women uh, and the old men. So it's a very, very, very important function today to celebrate that coming together and the willingness to reach out to others and, uh, and make peace. The <laughs> Na ukiona watu ya Nairobi wamekuja hapa wamesikia ya kwamba nyinyi mkombani na Turkana mumewaja kukombana na HMC mumewachana kukombana na Tukere nyinyi mko amani mkiona watu ya Nairobi wanakuja hapa wamejua ya kwamba hakuna maneno hapa kwa tiati na ningewasihi muende ile na moyo huo huo wejar kusokwa wejar la tasata ngo mugulo unoni karamne nyoni na sasa mpeleke hiyo amani kwa majirani wenu openyu talianoni le nyoni takiwe mpereris wa tuge tukani wa jmc umbachombuzu wa turkana hata turkana na hata kati yenu hata kwa kwa amazi alikete lia kwa lia kwa mburi na ile kitu cha muhimu tunaweza tukapea watoto uridhi ambao tunaweza tukawapa akikina ina pamman ina kategi tenimo ne yenu ni elimu kesa mission nani ajua pengine ndiye atakuwa kiongozi wa Kenya sasa ngonyo ngi pengine kuko ngolo ko chinya lenye uru nyole president ndaloko chinya uwo ndo kwa sababu Mungu wakati anatuumba anasema na wajua hata mkiwa katika nini ambapo lo tumbo za mama zenu ambapo lo for many people when they hear that we've come this far all the way from Nairobi many people say oh is it safe for you nimefurahi sana kwa wakili kutembea kwa kusaliwa mtoto e, mtoto yangu mdoko siku na wiki ile na nimefurahi sana kwa wakili kutoka Nairobi wanakucha kwa sherehe ya mtoto watu wanakucha na sawadi wengine wanakucha na kibui imejaa masiwa <laughs> wengine wanakucha na nguo na wengine wanakucha na kitu chochote tu kwa sababu unajua kusherekea kwa mtoto ni kama vile hata Yesu alisaliwa si aliletewa sawadi siku ile Yesu alisaliwa yeah. tunaona hakuna makosa kwa, kwa mtoto kama kama anasherekewa eh yeah. yeah, tunaika kwa ile iko kwa Biblia na hiyo ni customer ile ya Yesu Yesha I'm sure everybody that when you start working with communities they are the ones who are going to protect you and you don't have to feel as if your life is in danger and so so that's why I came and and I'm very very happy and enjoying each and every moment of my time here all right that is uh, Joe Karanja's work in Baringo County uh, East Pokot Yes, that, that is uh, Pokot, uh, um, the name of the location. It's Tiati, or Tiati, it's Tiati Division. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, I want you to tell us in brief about core initiatives of business. Okay. Um, you see, there is one sector that is most often forgotten. Yeah. And that's the business community. Mm. Uh, and at times we just feel that they are okay, mm. they are making money, so yeah. for them life is. Mm. So core initiatives of business, core as in C-A-U-X, yeah. named after this place in Switzerland called Core, is an initiative that brings together uh, business people. Mm. And it was actually, uh, it's more prominent in India and Japan, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where you find 
big business houses mm -hmm. they have come together to discuss the issues mm -hmm. and have what we call round tables okay. where businesses meet on their own mm -hmm. to discuss the challenges and share ideas yeah and uh, I came across them uh, because some of them are my friends and I said you cannot talk of business and leave Africa mm -hmm. out of that question mm -hmm. so I said we need to involve Africa yeah. in business because now Africa is a continent of the present and the future. Mm -hmm. And they said, why not? And uh, some time ago, two years ago, we invited some of the key people to come yeah. uh, to Kenya and meet some of the local mm -hmm. business people. Yeah. You mean the so key people in? I mean the CEOs, the CIB. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. CIA, uh, CEOs of various big mm -hmm. companies in this country. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, good one week okay. meeting with some of these people and then having a round table okay. which was uh, supported uh, by one of the companies here actually mm -hmm. the tata chemicals okay they funded the whole project the tata that is it's originally yes, from india, from india. Yes, okay. yes 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 yeah. they came and funded the that togetherness mm -hmm. you know the whole day of business people meeting about 40 of them were there mm -hmm. and then uh, so after that we've been having round tables yeah. and uh, We've been attending some of these conferences, yeah. uh, both locally and abroad. Yeah, so what's the bottom line? What do they want to achieve? What's the message of this, particularly in Kenya? Actually, what the message is, uh, you know, most businesses are driven by profits. Yeah. They want to make profits. Profits, 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 and just yes, profits. Yes, yes, yes. But business people now have been asking themselves, is there something else mm. outside the profits, mm. you know? For instance, can you be ethical yeah. and also remain competitive in business? Mm -hmm. So those are issues that you know business people are struggling, with, yeah. struggling with every day. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the issues that they have been discussing. And I've seen now in Kenya, one of the results, mm -hmm. big results after our roundtables, mm -hmm. is that now we are trying to address some of the challenges facing the business people. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, you know, if you are a supplier, yeah. in some uh, places you take so long for you mm -hmm. to be paid. Absolutely. And we, uh, we realize that some of our business people are just being pushed okay. out of business because yeah. they take loans mm -hmm. to do the supply. Yeah. But they have to wait for so long. Yeah, and, yeah so we've been yeah. able to take yeah. these concerns yeah. to the government. Mm -hmm. And we can see it is really changing. Mm -hmm. In some areas it's about corruption. Okay. You know, somebody will sit on a check Mm. They don't want to release until yeah, yeah. a certain percentage is paid. So those are some of the issues that we have. Mm. And also the question of relations between labor and management. Okay. Those are issues again we are bringing on board. Mm. But as I said, that uh, CIB is still very young in this country. Yeah. But we are trying to follow in the footsteps of India and, and Japan and, yeah, yeah. and Germany and so on. So do you think it's going to have any impact on this country? Uh, definitely it will. Okay. Definitely it will. And I think uh, this country we are we are making strides. Uh, the only problem is that we like complaining so much to the extent that we don't see the we progress. We want to see change, but we don't want to be part yes, of it. We don't want to be part, part of, of that, change. and also appreciate the little yeah, yeah. good steps we've, mm -hmm. we've we we have achieved. Okay. Uh, but I think we are we are going somewhere. And okay. I also want to take this opportunity to say that in. Uh, 2018 will have another big conference yeah. in India. Okay, India. In India, the place I told you, Panchgani, okay. in the state of Maharashtra, mm -hmm. where we'll have all these business people from all over the world mm -hmm. meeting there for a few days, okay. from February 6 to about 10. Okay. So any business person who is interested can yeah. get in touch. Yeah. And then uh, this is this information will be available on it will be available. platforms. Uh, I think through IOC website, okay, uh, Initiatives of Change website. All right, I will give these dates. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some who are business people who want to make linkages with business people in okay. India and other countries, okay. there will be a time after the conference, yeah. and also to see what India has done, absolutely, as far as industry is concerned. And you know, we are going to elections yes. now in this yeah. country, mm -hmm. and you talked about clean elections campaign in the yes. past. Yes. I wanted maybe before you give us your last take, yes. especially to the young people, what is one thing you'd want to tell a young person? Yes. Particularly, and I said a young person because these mm -hmm. are people who will be you know, going into business yes. and they will be used inappropriately. 
yes. uh, in terms of violence and all that. Yes. What is just one thing you'd want to tell them? I just and, want to say... Uh, this is your camera. Yes, I just want to say that uh, there's somebody who say that it only remains for good people to do nothing, yeah. for evil to triumph. Uh, I think many of our people are so much disillusioned with their politicians to an extent they say, we are not going to vote. Mm. But I want to tell you, immediately you decide that you are not going to vote, you are actually voting for the wrong people. Absolutely. So I'm encouraging the young people, the mass registration of voters is just about, I think January 16. Right. So they should come out mm. and uh, religious leaders and people of goodwill must mobilize our young people yeah. to get these votes. Mm. Because your vote is actually the actual power you have, okay. you know, to express your will and to see how this country is governed. And after that, again, we have to decide as a country that never again shall we witness bloodshed yeah. and displacement mm -hmm. just because of elections. Elections, yeah. elections come and go, mm -hmm. but the country must remain intact. Okay. So... That's what I want to say for now. Thank you very much. Nice. And you know, I, and you're also a lawyer, so yes. you can represent me in court in case I'm, I land in trouble. Why not? Why not? Actually, when we were doing the, the, cost. the first clean elections mm -hmm. campaign, yeah. there are some people I don't want to mention their names. There. Yeah. You know, they were wrongly accused. And they come after you. And I, went, this show. and I went to court to represent them oh. at no charge. I didn't oh. charge anybody. Okay. Let me just send by saying, sometimes some of the things we do is a is a calling. Yeah, absolutely. And a calling is eternal. Mm. If I have a calling to be a medical doctor, mm. I tell you I'll do it. I cannot run away and leave a patient. Absolutely. Just because I've not been paid. Mm. Because for me that's a calling. Especially when you take the oath. Yes. Yeah. And this is a challenge I want to give to our doctors also. Mm. You know. We well, see in this country what a doctor earns. Mm. One doctor in this country his salary pays for about three or four doctors in India. Oh. Go and do that research. But that's the fact. And I think that's the reason you find the healthcare in this country is yeah. damn expensive. Yeah. It's damn expensive. Mm. And I think my only regret as a Kenyan yeah. is that we have become so much materialistic. Yeah. Everyone wants to get more. That's more, it. Just more. That's it. And, and I think yeah. we need to change that. Mm. We need to change that. There's something much more other than acquiring and amazing wealth and yeah, so on. Yeah. Relationships mm -hmm. are more better. They are solid yeah. and they remain forever. Material things don't last. Yeah. So that's what I, I want. I'm going to we need to sign out. Uh, thank you very much. That is Joe Karanja and that's an amazing story we had for you. That good, no, bad leaders are elected in by good citizens who do not go to vote. Yes. Absolutely. And we are really thankful that you watched this episode and we hope that you continue watching and continue to subscribe Experience Media Kenya on YouTube. Thank you very much for coming. Asante Sana for hosting me. Hope to see you soon. Asante. All right. Thank and you all the so best much. for your work. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.